Heavenly Father, we thank you once again tonight. Thank you for your children. Thank you for your people. Thank you for all the workers. Thank you for everyone here, Lord. With great expectations who have come. And we know that nobody will be disappointed in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, tonight, a rain of wonders. Showers of wonders. Miracles upon your people tonight in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, every boy, every girl, every child, every youth, all our campus students, all our mothers, all our fathers, all our leaders, all our workers, all our pastors, overseers, oh Lord, I pray tonight something special, something spectacular, something supernatural. Grant everyone in Jesus' name. I pray that those who have never seen a miracle tonight will be the day, will be the night where they see miracle directly before them and around them in Jesus' name. Tonight, save souls. Tonight, transform lives. Tonight, open blind eyes. Tonight, I command the lame to rise up and walk. Tonight, let there be deliverance. Tonight, let there be dominion. Tonight, move mountains out of the lives of people in Jesus' name. Confirm your miracles, signs, and wonders in every life. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 5. 1 Samuel chapter 5. The Lord is giving us a revelation tonight. As I speak to you in this message on signs and wonders in his presence. Signs and wonders in his presence. There's a lot in this message. Just in the presence of God. Just by coming here. Knowing that where two or three are gathered in his name. He is in their midst. And the Lord is mightily present here tonight. You will see him. You'll feel him. You will sense him. And the supernatural wonder of the Lord will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Follow me as I read. For Samuel chapter 5 verse 1. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when day of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And he took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when they arose early on the morrow, on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left unto him. Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon, nor any that come into Dagon's house, tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod until this day. Give me a good amen. amen. I have read the story to you. What happened here is that the ark of the Lord was taken from the children of Israel. And the Philistines thought that they had got a great victory. You must understand that the ark of the Lord represented the presence of the Lord among the children of Israel. And so the people thought they had caught the God of Israel. And they put it in their shrine. And they got their idol. Their God was before the ark of the Lord. Without any priest there. Without any Levite there, without any prayer warrior there, 
without any prophet there. The ark of the Lord, just by the presence of the Lord, began to walk wonders. And I'm telling you that the presence of the Lord is right there where you are tonight. You will sense it's moving. You will see his miraculous power in your life tonight by his presence in Jesus' name. Remember while you are there, great I see that is in you than he that is in the world. Emmanuel, God with us. The Almighty, the Father of eternity is right there with you. And while the message is going on and you affirm again, and you confess again, and you believe again, and you rest in the very fact that the presence of the Lord is with you, miracles will be taking place. Your mountains will move. Every dagon or dragon in your life will vanish away in Jesus' name. They woke up in the morning. And they saw that Dagon was falling. So they set Dagon again on his feet. By the time they woke up, the following morning, that was the third day now, the head was cut off. The hands were cut off. And from that day, nobody went to the threshold of the shrine of Dagon anymore. Just by you being here tonight, in the presence of the Lord, the power of the Lord, will work miraculously in your life in Jesus' name. As we come to the New Testament Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, we begin to see how that now translates to this presence, power of the Lord in the midst of the people doing wonders. Acts chapter 5, from verse 12. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. The Lord is saying that tonight, many signs and wonders. Not a few, many signs and wonders will be wrought in our midst in Jesus' name. And it says in verse 12, And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, does not any man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. Verse 14, and the believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women, inasmuch that they brought forth the sick into the street and laid them on beds and couches that at the least, the shadow of Peter, did you hear that? The shadow of Peter, I said, did you hear that? The shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. That is, even if Peter did not speak, even if he did not preach, even if he did not command, even if he did not cast out any, de any demon, just the shadow of Peter, because of the presence of the Lord in his life, will do wonders. That's why I say tonight, According to the word of the Lord, which cannot be broken, the presence of the Lord here will heal the sick, will open the eyes of the blind, will deliver the oppressed, and will do great, marvelous, miraculous things in the life of every one of us in Jesus' name. That at the least, the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them, there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. Tell me the rest of that verse. And they were healed, everyone. Tell me out loud. And they were healed, everyone. Tell me for the last time. Just the shadow of Peter passing by. Because Christ, the mighty one, Christ, the great physician, was in his life. Because of that, the presence of the Lord did those wonders. I come to assure you tonight, it will happen in your life. I said it will happen in your family. 
it will happen upon your children. Now, point number one supernatural wonders in his presence. Supernatural wonders in his presence. Number two, signs and wonders for all his people. How many people? Signs and wonders for all his people. Number three, the sevenfold wonder of his power. The sevenfold wonder of his power. Number one, supernatural wonders in his presence. Understand that you don't need any other thing. All you need is come in the presence of the Lord and you'll find those supernatural wonders working mightily in your life. It's number one, to recognize his presence. Recognize his presence. Number two, reckon his presence. Exodus chapter 15 verse 11. Exodus 15 verse 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? While he said tonight, those wonders of his oppression, the wonders of his power, the wonders of his presence will be taking place everywhere in the front, in the middle, at the back, on the right, on the left, inside, outside, in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 1, we're told of the name of Jesus, the title of Jesus, and anywhere you mention that name, the presence of the Almighty is there. Anywhere you mention that name, the presence of God is there. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Matthew 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth his son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. You'll call his name Jesus. Call me that name. Jesus. When you call that name, he'll show up. He'll be present by your side in Jesus' name. His presence will bring salvation. His presence will bring healing. His presence will bring deliverance. His presence will bring strength. His presence will bring power. His presence will bring holiness in our lives. His presence will you there. All the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. Now, verse 22. All this was done. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet by the, of the Lord, by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall, shall be a child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name, tell me, Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Anytime you mention Jesus is Emmanuel, God is with you. And the presence of the Lord will do what he did in those days gone by in Jesus' name. That's why I come to tell you tonight that because I know Jesus is here. The Holy Ghost is here. And the Father is here. Salvation is here tonight. Healing is here tonight. Children for the barren here tonight. Miracles, wonders for everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. The supernatural is very near, as near as the name of Jesus, as near as the presence of the Lord. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, how much power? All power, what kind of power? All power, that means power on earth, power in heaven. Power over sin, power over sickness, power over spirits, power over Satan, power over circumstances, power over storm, power to provide, power to prevail, power in every direction, power for everyone. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Anywhere on earth, you mention the name of Jesus, that power will be there. All power is given unto me. In heaven and in earth, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. How often? How often? Always. You see here tonight? Always. He here. Even unto the end of the world. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever, whatsoever, wonderful, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth, tell me, shall be bound in heaven. You and I, we are going to bind every negative force in your life here tonight. It will be bound in heaven in Jesus' name. And then you say, whatsoever you shall lose on earth, I release the blessings of God upon your life tonight. Upon your family tonight. Your spiritual life will rise up and you will walk in the strength of the Lord in Jesus' name. If I release it on earth, it is released in heaven. If I lose it on earth, it is loosed in heaven. Whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again I say unto you that if two or if two of you shall agree as touching anything, anything, anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. You see here tonight? You see by your side tonight? You see watching over you tonight? You see ready to give you a miracle tonight? You better believe that is for a fact he's going to do it in Jesus' name. Signs and wonders without number. Is going to do because that's the character of God. Anywhere is present, signs and wonders are there. Anywhere is present, salvation is there. Anywhere is present, sanctification, holiness is there. Anywhere is present, miracles, signs, wonders, exploits are there. We're looking at Job chapter 9, verse 4. Job chapter 9. I read from verse 4. It says in verse 4, He is wise in heart. He is wise in earth and mighty in strength. That's about our God. That's the Almighty. He's mighty in strength. And then he says, Who has hardened himself against him and prospered? Jump down to verse 9. Which maketh Acturus, Orion, and Pledus, and the chambers of the south, which doeth great things past finding out. Yea, and wonders without number. Wonders without number. What is it? He does wonders without number because the people are so many. And no matter the number of the people here tonight, uh, miracles and wonders without number. I thought you'll say, Amen. Look at verse 11. Lo, he goeth by me. And I see him not. Even though you cannot see him with your naked eyes, yet he is there. I said, he is there. Say, he is here with me. Say that, he is here with me. The presence of the Lord is with me. The power of the Lord is with me. All the signs and wonders are here with me tonight. Say amen to that. Lo, he went by me, and I see him not. He passeth by, he passeth on also. But I perceive him not. Then he says, Behold, he taketh away who can hinder him. He taketh away sin who can hinder him. He taketh away sickness who can hinder him. He taketh away poverty who can hinder him. He taketh away blindness who can hinder him. All your problems are taken away tonight in Jesus' name. And then he says, or who can say unto him, what doest thou? The Lord will do those great and supernatural things in your life tonight in Jesus' name. In Psalm 77, Psalm 77, I'm reading from verse 14. Psalm 77, we're looking at verse 14. How great is our God, how mighty is our God doing wonders. 
Psalm 77 verse 14 he says thou art the God that doest wonders he didn't say thou art the God that did wonders in the past of course he did it in the past but he's doing it today because thou art the God that doest wonders even tonight he's doing wonders I said tonight he's doing wonders he'll do that wonder in your life he'll do that wonder on the person around you there beside you there behind you in front of you wonders multiplied here tonight in jesus name he says thou hast declared thy strength among the people the lord is here tonight to declare his power to declare his authority and to declare his miracle walking wonders in our midst and you will see it and feel it and sense it and affirm it in your life in jesus name isaiah chapter 29 isaiah chapter 29 verse 14 therefore behold i will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people i will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of the wise men shall perish and the understanding of the prudent men shall be healed that is there is no wisdom that can fight against the wonders the miracle power of the lord in your life here tonight in jesus name acts of the apostles chapter 6 i'm reading there from verse 8 Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, we're looking at verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power. Stephen, full of faith and power. I want to say tonight, every leader here, we're full of faith and power in Jesus' name. And as we pray, as, as we agree together in prayer, those wonderful, miraculous, supernatural things will definitely take place in every life in Jesus' name. Things you have never thought of, things you have never seen, things you have never imagined, the Lord will do. In every life, there will be shouts of praise and shouts of hallelujah because of the great things the Lord will accomplish tonight in every life. Look at that again in Acts chapter 6 and verse 8. And see me full of faith and power did not just ordinary wonders great wonders and great miracles among the people we're looking at chapter 14 verse 3 chapter 14 of acts verse 3 signs and wonders signs and wonders in the presence of the lord tonight it says long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders, granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Our own turn has come. Acts chapter 15 verse 12. Acts 15 verse 12. Then all the multitudes kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Tonight, God will give you a testimony. Because there will be wonders of great salvation. There will be wonders of great healing. I thought you would say amen. There will be wonders of incredible deliverance. There will be wonders of supernatural victory tonight. Wonders of miraculous provision tonight. And wonders of extraordinary miracles in every life here tonight. In Jesus' name. Because if two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask, is going to do it for us. That the long-standing sicknesses you have been bearing, you have been carrying, all those long-standing sicknesses will vanish away tonight. The mountains that have confronted your life for a long time. All those mountains at the point will command that mountain to move in the name of the Lord. By the spirit of the Lord. By the word of the Lord. By the commandment of the Lord. All those long standing mountains will move away out of your life in Jesus name. Because God says I am God I change not. 
and because Jesus said it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did before in removing all those mountains out of the lives of people is going to do your life tonight in Jesus' name. Salvation for those who need to be saved, real salvation, transformation of life, change of life, because the Bible affirms and confirms that if any man be in Christ, anyone that comes to Christ, it comes to Christ with faith, believing there will be transformation in that life. There will be recreation in that life. There will be reformation in that life. If any man be in Christ, tell me it's a new creature. Tell me aloud, it's a new creature. Tell me that again. It's a new creature. Everything will become new in your life in Jesus' name. Old lifestyle of sinning, all that will be washed away. A new strength, a new power, a new life will come. All things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. Everything will become new in our lives in Jesus' name. Great, great, great salvation. Great healing. Healing that people will say, are you not so and so? You were blind before, but now you can see. You were lame before, but now you can rise up and walk. And all those impossible things in our lives, everything God will sweep them away by the power of his blood, of the mighty blood of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Something knocking your head, moving about in your, in your head, and making your head to be like boiling water. All those things will vanish away. There will be great deliverance and great healing from all the afflictions of your life tonight, in Jesus' name victory success promotion prosperity in a miraculous way a way you are not expecting the lord will do in your life because of the mighty presence of the lord supernatural so wonders in his presence i go to point number two signs and wonders for all his people how many people how many people all his people tonight nobody will say i never got it tonight you will get it nobody will say he didn't get to me it will get to you tonight just keep away just keep away because as we send forth the mighty power of the lord as we proclaim the promises of the lord all those promises will become yes and amen in your life deuteronomy chapter 34 Deuteronomy chapter 34, I'm reading from verse 10, from verse 11, and from verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 34, from verse 10, we look at what the Lord himself, what he did in those days gone by, and the word of God has not changed. The might of God has not changed, and the Lord Jesus Christ, the great name he gave us, that name has not changed. He's still able to do supernatural things today. Deuteronomy chapter 34, I'm reading from verse 10. It says, and there arose not a prophet since in Israel, like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Whom the Lord knew face to face. A man can come to such a point where God knows him and where he knows God face to face. A prophet can come to such a position in the faith and the ministry where God knows him face to face and he knows God face to face. A minister of the gospel, a preacher of the word of God, a pastor can come to such a point where he knows God face to face and God knows him face to face. And you can come to that point like Moses where you know God face to face and God knows you face to face and tonight is that night. Night of wonders, night of miracles, night of the supernatural that God will, will accomplish in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Knowing God face to face that when you are sending forth your prayer, he knows you face to face. It's not like you are sending to a distant God that is far away. It's very near. And so as you open your mouth and you tell the it says, I'm here, I'm here. And before we finish the prayer, bam, the miracle is there. Look at verse 11. In all the signs and the wonders, verse 11, in all the signs, in all the wonders which God sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land. And in all that mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. The sight of all Israel. You'll see the miracle with your own eyes today. How many of you are waiting to see a miracle? And you believe you are going to see a miracle? It will come your way. 
be it unto you according to your faith in Jesus name we have read about Moses. Let me read about you now. You know, sometimes when we talk about that was Moses, that was Moses. How about me? Let me show you Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. I'm reading here from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Your name is here. Your number is here. Your residence is here. Your identity is here. And it will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders. Say that with me. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me and for signs and for wonders and end it with a great amen. amen Daniel Daniel chapter 6 verse 27 the kind of God we serve the omnipotent one that we serve the almighty that we serve the creator of the heavens and the earth that we serve the one that changes not the immutable God that we serve that is still as powerful today as mighty today, as compassionate today, as, as faithful today as he ever had been. That he's still doing the same thing today like he did before in Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6, verse 27. He tells us, he delivereth and rescueth. He walketh signs and wonders. That's our God. Not only that he did it in the past, not only that he will do it in the millennium, in the future, he is doing it today. That's why it says he delivereth, present tense. He walketh, present tense. He walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. And he will deliver you from the power of those lions in Jesus' name. And when Jesus came into this world, he demonstrated that power. When Jesus came into this world, he demonstrated the healing power, the delivering power, and the power that has dominion over every form of power of darkness. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter, 20, chapter 2, verse 22, we're given the testimony of what Jesus did, and then Hebrews follows it up by telling us that Jesus has not changed. He will not change in your family. It will not change in your life. You can have the assurance tonight, 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 that your night is the night of wonders for you. That this night is your night of miracle. Because Jesus Christ has never failed and because Jesus Christ will not fail today. Look at this, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Jesus Christ approved to be the Son of God by miracles, wonders, and signs. Jesus Christ approved of God to be the Savior of the world by miracles, wonders, and signs. Jesus Christ approved to be the great physician by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you all, as ye yourselves also know. Join that with Hebrews chapter 13. Jesus Christ approved of God by miracles, signs, and wonders. And join that with Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, tell me. Jesus Christ, I said, tell me. Jesus Christ, say it aloud. The same yesterday and today and forever. What he did then, he's doing now. He healed all the sick at that time. He can do it now, he will do it now. He delivered all the press, all the oppressed at that time. He did it then, he will do it now. 
He saved all those that came to him at that time. He did it at that time. He will do it now. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved even tonight in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Let's look at Romans chapter 15. In Romans chapter 15, the assurance we have that the presence of the Lord is filled with his power and that anywhere that name is mentioned, his power to save, his power to heal, his power to deliver will be made visible. Romans chapter 15, reading from verse 18. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Through mighty signs and wonders, you see that anywhere the name of Jesus is mentioned, it will be through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem to round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Then he tells us in verse 21, but as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. Those who have not heard before, you'll hear it today in Jesus' name. In um, Hebrews again, chapter 2. Hebrews again, chapter 2. I read from verse 4, then I back up to verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles. Tonight is that night when God will bear witness to the authority of his word, to the veracity, to the truthfulness of his word in your life, in the church, around you, very near you there. The Lord will bear witness to the veracity and the truthfulness of his word in Jesus' name. How God bore witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Now come to verse 1. Therefore, we are to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard. All this word of God we are hearing. We give the more honest heed. The promises of God. We give the more honest seed. And the proclamation of his promise, we give the more honest seed. The prophet, the prophetic word, we give the more honest seed. When he says, whosoever shall call on the name shall be saved, we give the more honest seed. When he says that he takes away our sicknesses, we give the more honest seed. When he says he delivers us from all our afflictions, we give the more honest seed. And when he says that he said to operate and to perform all his promises in our lives, we give the more honest seed that as we pay attention and say, that promise is mine, that prayer is for me, that authority will work in my life. That breaking of the yoke will work in my life as we pay attention. You'll find it will be yours in Jesus' name. Therefore, because he did it in the past. Therefore, because he's mightily present. Therefore, because he cannot fail, he will not fail. Therefore, because he's same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, we ought to give the more honest seed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them sleep. Do not sleep away from you in Jesus' name. You hold on to them. You hold on steadfastly unto them. Then he says, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, we're not going to neglect it in Jesus' name. So great salvation, I will not neglect. I said I will not neglect. 
So great healing, I will not neglect. So great deliverance, I will not neglect. So great victory, I will not neglect. And so great authority, I will not neglect. Because it says, how shall we escape? How do we escape the judgment of God if we neglect so great salvation? How do we escape the suffering if we neglect so great healing? How do we escape the deprivation and the slavery and the oppression if we neglect so great deliverance? Everything Jesus worked for us on the cross of Calvary. So great redemption. So great salvation. So great deliverance, so great dominion, so great healing, so great provision. We don't want to neglect. We will not neglect. We'll be recipients and partakers of all these blessings in Jesus' name. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by the them that heard him. That's why it now says in verse 4, God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. That will will be fulfilled in our life here tonight in Jesus name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, reading here from verse 40. Acts, chapter 2, verse 40. These people had the word of the Lord, and they gave them more earnest heed to what they heard. And when they gave heed to what they heard, it worked wonders in, our, in their lives. Just like he's going to do in our lives tonight. I say to do the same thing in our lives tonight. You give heed to his word, and then it works wonders in our lives. Acts chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 40. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. They gladly received the word. And we're gladly receiving the word of God. And every word we gladly receive will walk in every life, wonders, miracles, signs in Jesus' name. And then it goes on to say, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They continued. I'll continue. I said, I will continue. I said, I will continue. The secret of retaining, maintaining the miracle, the signs. The wonders is that we continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Verse 43, and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs, many wonders and signs, many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. It will be repeated tonight. The Lord has promised to us that this is what we'll do. And he's going to do it for all his people. Signs and wonders for all his people. Any of the people of God here tonight? Will signs and wonders come to you? I said, will it come to you? Anywhere you are, it will reach you in Jesus' name. Point number three now. The sevenfold wonder of his power. The sevenfold wonder of his power. Number one, the wonder of his workmanship. The wonder of his workmanship. What's workmanship? He recreates you. He remodels you. He refashions you. He, re he reforms you. He says, you are going to be my showpiece. And I'm going to walk on you. I'm going to walk all over you. You'll be the workmanship of the Lord and the wonder of his workmanship. Number two, is the wonder of our worthiness. It's a wonder that fallen man can so come near God and then he makes you worthy. And when you pray, he said, that's a worthy one praying. When you claim a promise, that's a worthy one claiming a promise. And when you hold on, you lay claim to the provision of the Lord, he says, that's a worthy one. The wonder of our worthiness. Number three is the wonder of his word. The wonder of his word. The word is sent forth. The spoken word. The wonder of his word. The written word. 
the wonder of his word, the living word. The wonder of his word, the healing word, the wonder of his word, the word that has authority and dominion and power, the wonder of his word. Number four is the wonder of his will. The wonder of his will, the will of the Lord in your life, the will of the Lord in my life, the wonder of it all. Number five is the wonder of our wells. Wells our riches, wells our prosperity, wells our abundance, the wonder of our wells. Number six is the wonder of our weapon, the weapon we have. Many people don't understand what wonder of weapon we have. And tonight, you're going to discover that mighty, powerful, sharp, edged sword weapon is in your hand. It will defeat every enemy in your life in Jesus' name. Number seven is the wonder of our worship. Every one of those wonders will perform untold miracles in your life. And I believe tonight you are in for wonders in Jesus' name. Give me number one. The wonder of his workmanship. Ephesians chapter 2, I'm reading there from verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 10. For we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Do you know that when God created the world, he created everything out of nothing? And do you know when he created man, he took the dust of the earth, worthless dust, valueless dust, dust, insignificant dust, lifeless dust. He took that dust and then he created man and then he breathed into him the breath of life. And he wants to take your life. It doesn't matter where you are today, how worthless you are. How valueless you are. It doesn't matter today. Whatever you don't have, whatever is absent in your life, it takes your life today. And it says, I'm going to recreate you. A recreation is taking place tonight in Jesus' name. It says, because we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. You see, when people manufacture, those manufacturers, when they manufacture a car, or manufacture anything. They put their label there because they are proud of what they have made. And tonight, God is going to make somebody out of you. Then he'll put his label there. It will say, made, not made in China. How many of you are made in Taiwan? How many of you are made in Africa? This one is made in heaven. I said this one is made in heaven. And the stamp of heaven will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Angels will see you and wonder. Men and women will see you and wonder. It will recreate your brain and recreate your mind and create your, your spirit. It will recreate your soul. It will reconstruct your body. All the deformity in your body, everything the Lord will take away in Jesus' name. And then when I see you tomorrow, I wonder. When people see you tomorrow, they wonder. When you look at yourself in the mirror tomorrow, you will wonder. Wonder of all wonders. Number one, the wonder of his workmanship. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we shall walk in them. Wonders are going to take place in your life. Any deformity you see there now, by tomorrow morning, you'll not see it anymore in Jesus' name. Any kind of failure, any kind of malfunctioning part of the body, part of your soul, part of your spirit, in your thinking, in your life, anything in the inner man that is not really, not, not very good. By the time you wake up tomorrow, a recreation will have taken place in Jesus' name. The wonder, the wonder, the wonder of his workmanship. Number two, give me number two now. The wonder of his worthiness. Let me show you something before I show the wonder of your own worthiness, your own worthiness. I'm looking, I'm looking at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading here now in Matthew chapter 8. And we're looking at verse, uh, we're looking at verse 8. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. He was a centurion. He said, Lord, I am not worthy. He had not met the Lord. He was meeting the Lord for the first time. He said, Lord, I am not worthy. But the Lord is going to pick you up. Maybe you say, I'm not worthy of his salvation. Tonight, he'll make you worthy. I'm not worthy of his healing. Tonight, he'll make you worthy. 
I'm not worthy of his deliverance tonight. He'll make you worthy. I'm not worthy of heaven tonight. He'll make you worthy. I'm not worthy of a good name tonight. He'll make you worthy. I'm not worthy of his favor tonight. He'll make you worthy in Jesus' name. The wonder of our worthiness that angels will look at us and say, you are worthy. Christ will look at you and say, you are worthy. Heaven will look at you and say, you are worthy. I said you are worthy. I said you are worthy. And then you'll not be praying every time, oh Lord, look at me. I'm the warm of the doors. I'm not worthy. Revelation chapter 3. Now Revelation chapter 3. The wonder, the wonder, the wonder of our worthiness. Revelation chapter 3. And I'm reading there from verse 4. Revelation chapter 3. This is beautiful. Open your Bible. Open your Bible. Because this is yours. Say, this is mine. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4. It says, thou hast a few names. Even in sadness, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are. Tell me. Tell me. For we are worthy. For I am worthy. He'll wash you whiter than snow. All the stains, all the dead, he'll take everything away. He'll wash your inner man. He'll wash your soul. He'll wash your heart. He'll wash your brain. He'll wash your mind. He'll wash every part of you, inside and outside. Then he'll present you before the Father. And the Father will say, what a wonder, what a wonder. The wonder of our worthiness. Number three, give me number three. The wonder of his word. This word, this word, the spoken word, the wonder of his word. Anytime God gave the word, he put it in the mouth of the prophet. By the time it came out of the mouth of the prophet, it's working wonders. Look at Moses before Pharaoh. What defeated Pharaoh? The word, the word, the word. And then look at Joshua before the sun and the moon. The word was in the word, the wonder of his word. Look at Elijah. He said, according to my word, it's the wonder of his word. Look at Elisha. By this time tomorrow, they'll be selling food very cheap. And then he said, by the word. And the man that leaned upon the king, that if the windows of heaven will open, my destiny be. Then he spoke the word again. He said, you'll see it, but you'll not eat of it. And thank God, I will eat of it. I said, I will eat of it. The wonder of his word. And look at Jesus Christ everywhere he went. Look at what he did by the word. In Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8. Verse 16 is the word. It's the word. The power of that word. The wonder of that word. It says, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his words. With his words, with his words, and healed all that was sick is the wonder of his word. And tonight, that word will come your way. It will touch your body. It will touch your brain. It will touch your blind eyes. And those blind eyes will open in Jesus' name. You have anybody there that is deaf and dumb, that word will come to them tonight and those deaf ears will be opened in Jesus' name. Any tumor, any tuberculosis, any cancer there, the word is coming tonight. The wonder of his word. When that word comes tonight, it will take all that cancer, all those cancer germs, will take everything away in Jesus' name. Number four is the wonder of his will. The wonder of his will. I'm looking at First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Here is a great wonder. Here is a great wonder. The wonder of his will. We're looking at First Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. In First Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved? Who will have all men to be saved? The wonder of his will. There's nobody here tonight that will say, I cannot be saved. Why not? Why not? The wonder of his will. Because he says, he will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants you to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's his will. That's his will. That's his will. And whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast off, cast out. That's his will. He wants to receive you. 
He wants to save you. No matter how bad you have been, how sinful you have been, how vile, how defiled you have been, he wants to cleanse you and wash you and save you and convert you and change you and transform you. The wonder of his will in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, watch, not willing that any shall perish. 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 He wants everyone saved. This is the wonder of his will. And then he says, But that all, all, all shall come to repentance. Number five, the wonder of of our wells, the wonder of our wells, that he can take a poor person from the prison and raise him up to the palace, the wonder of our wells, that can take somebody who is very poor and give him prosperity, the wonder of our wealth. Do you know that your situation is going to improve? Do you know that you are going to become prosperous? Do you know that success is written with your name on it? Do you know that your future is brighter than the past? Do you know that everything you lack in the past is going to be supplied this year? The wonder of our will. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, I'm reading from chapter 1. Second Chronicles, chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 11 and verse 12. Verse 11, And God said unto Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. Are you there? Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor. This is you. Solomon is no more here. All these things are written for learning upon whom the ends of the world are come. This is yours. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee. Neither shall there any after thee have the like. Amen and amen. The wonder of our wealth. When people say, they'll say, this is not you. This is not you. This is the hand of God in your life. Only God could have done this in your life. He will do it in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. It is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant, which is where unto thy fathers, as it is this day. It will happen. Number one, the wonder of his workmanship. Number two, the wonder of our worthiness. Number three, the wonder of his word. Number four, the wonder of his will. Number five, the wonder of our wealth. Number six, give it to me, the wonder of our weapons. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians, you have weapons you should reckon with. Because all the parts of the enemies will not be able to stand before you in Jesus' name. The wonder of our weapons. Second Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 4 and verse 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. 
for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We have weapons here tonight that will pull down every stronghold in your life, in your family, in your ministry, in your local church in Jesus' name. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It has happened already. And all those strongholds in your life tonight when we make use of the weapon from here and you come in agreement by faith over there, they're cast down in Jesus' name. All the imaginations of the enemy against your life, against your progress, against your ministry, against your family tonight, they're cast down in Jesus' name. Great will be your victory tonight. Great will be your deliverance tonight. And great will be your dominion tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, the wonder of his workmanship. Number two, the wonder of our worthiness. Number three, the wonder of his word. Number four, the wonder of his will. Number five is the wonder of our wealth. Number six, the wonder of our weapons. Number seven, the wonder of our worship. The wonder of our worship. As we worship the Lord tonight, healing will come. Amen. Deliverance will come. Amen. Power will come. Dominion will come in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 8 verse 1. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. That's all. That's all. There came a leper and worshipped him. The sickness of leprosy covered every part of his body. You can see it on his head. See it on his face. See all the fingers already ripped off. See all his toes already cut off. And see all the limbs affected by leprosy. But he said, I will not look at that. I'm going to experience the wonder of our worship. And as he worshiped, the Lord, it says, he came and that there came, behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, the word of his will, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him and saying, I will, the wonder of his will, join together with the wonder of worship, be thou clean. And immediately, I said, immediately, I said immediately, his leprosy was cleansed because he came and he worshipped before the, the wonder of, the, of our worship. As we bring all those seven things together, there's no way you can miss the miracle power of God because signs and wonders, supernatural wonders, sevenfold wonders will happen in your life. As you come into the wonder of his workmanship and you come to the wonder of our worthiness, you come to the wonder of the word. He sent the word and heal them. Send the word and save them. Send the word and deliver them. Send the word and protect them. Send the word and deliver them from all their attacks and oppressions. The wonder of his word and the wonder of his will. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is here tonight. It will reach every one of us in Jesus' name. And the wonder of our worship, the wonder of our worship. Oh Lord, we'll worship you and exalt you. Oh Lord, we know that you are the only one. There's no other name given among men whereby you can be saved or healed or delivered or prospered or provided for or protected except the name of Jesus. As we worship him with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind, the wonder of his worship will come in your life in Jesus' name. Salvation will come. Healing will come. Deliverance will come. All the blessings of God will come in your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's time now to explain the sevenfold wonder. The sevenfold wonder is time now. Rise up and say, Lord, here am I. Oh, Lord, here am I. The wonder, the wonder, the wonder of his workmanship. Let him walk on you. Let him walk on you. Walk on your heart and walk on your soul and walk on your inner man and walk on your body and walk on your brain and walk on your thoughts and walk on every part of you. Walk on you. The wonder of his workmanship. Let him renew your life. 
Let him renew your heart. Let him renew your spirit. Let him save you if you are not saved yet. Let him restore you if you are backsliding. And say, Lord, here am I. Oh, Lord, here am I. Let him do it. The wonder of his workmanship. Surrender yourself. Surrender yourself into the hands of the Lord. And let him work. And let him work. And let him work. He will work. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Tonight will be the night of wonder in your life in Jesus' name. Hold on. The greatest wonder, the initial wonder, is the wonder of salvation. When your sins are taken away, every sin you ever committed in your life, as you present yourself before the Lord and you experience Jesus Christ as Savior. Because the Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except you give your life to the Lord. And you, and you are sure, because of the wonder of salvation, that your sins are taken away. You are born again. You are forgiven. Your name written in the book of life. Except that happens, all the rest will be useless and worthless. But it's coming your way tonight. I said it's coming your way tonight. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tell me, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You'll be saved in Jesus' name. As bowed and eyes closed, you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you know that if you do that with all your heart, in all sincerity, that all your sins will be taken away, eternal life will come to you, forgiveness will come to you, salvation will be yours. You know that when you call on the name of the Lord, you say, Lord, I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. And now I hand over, I surrender, I submit my life unto you. Turning away from all my sins, believing on the Lord Jesus who died for me. The moment you do that, wonder of all wonders in your life. And it will be the mother of all the wonders. All the wonders will come to your life in Jesus' name. If you want to do that tonight, that you're giving your life to the Lord as your own personal Savior, you want to say, Jesus is my Savior and Lord, wherever you are, just raise up your hand. I'll be praying for you for this wonder of salvation. Wherever you are, where are you? Where are you? If you're backsliding, you know that you need restoration. Also raise up your hand anywhere you are. I want to see you. Don't look at other people. This is just me. This is just me. Oh Lord, this is me. I need your salvation. Where are you? Raise up that hand. I'll be praying with you over here. Can I see your hand? Can I see your hand? Can you wave the hand at me? If, okay, God bless you. God bless you. It will be done in Jesus' name. While you're raising up your hand there in the quietness of your surrounding, just tell the Lord, Lord, I accept you right now as my Savior. I know I'm a sinner. I've done things I shouldn't have done, but Lord, I come for your forgiveness. I know you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I give all my sins to you, Lord. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your salvation. I receive your righteousness. Lord, I believe that right now, because you cannot fail, I am saved. Lord, I pray, give me grace to continue ever with you. So that on the final day, you'll take me to heaven. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name for all these who have indicated they want restoration or salvation. Lord, I pray, forgive all their sins in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you grant them eternal life right now. Let your spirit bear witness in their heart that all their sins are forgiven. Let the peace of God, the joy of salvation, come in their souls right now in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. 
And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Now we're going to experience every form of wonder in our lives. You believe that? I said you believe that? Before the Jericho walls fall down, we're going to shout hallelujah, praise the Lord, and clap our hands rejoicing because our walls, those Jericho walls have fallen already. I said Jer those Jericho walls have fallen already. Walls of sickness, walls of infirmity, and walls of deformity. They are falling already in Jesus' name. Come on, put those hands together, put those hands together, put those hands together, and let those Jericho walls fall in your life. In Jesus' name. Jericho walls are falling tonight in Jesus' name. Blind eyes will open. Deaf ears will open. Swelling will vanish away. Goiter will vanish away. Hunchback will vanish away. Whatever sickness, whatever infirmity, healing is coming your way right now in Jesus' name. Lay your hand upon yourself where you're sick. By the way, before we continue, how many of you know that you have testimony already? Amen. Amen. Testimony. 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 Amen. Lay your hand where the problem is. Let's drive this thing away right here. All those Canaanites and Jebusites and Amorites and Ammonites and Ammon, whatever they are, they're going tonight. And then you raise up the other hand for victory. Victorious hands. Anointed hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless your name tonight because I know your presence is here. Where your presence is, there is power. Where your presence is, there is anointing. Where your presence is, there is healing. Where your presence is, there is deliverance. Where your presence is, there is a, there is a supernatural miracle. And therefore, Lord, I pray tonight, shower your miracle blessing upon your people in Jesus' name. Those who are swelling in their body, that swelling, I command you right now. Come out in Jesus' name. The swelling on the neck, at the back, in the private part, on the leg, elephantiasis, I command that swelling right now. You have no right to be there because I speak what forth the word of power, the word of anointing, the word of unction, and the word of healing and deliverance. You swelling, come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are blind or those who have dim eyesight, those who have glaucoma or cataract, whatever. I pray, Lord, touch those eyes right now. Blind eyes, I command you, be open. Blind eyes, I command you, be open. All the cataract and glaucoma, whatever dimness of sight there, clear everything away in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are deaf and dumb. I pray, Lord, that those deaf ears will open. Those dumb tongues will, open, will speak out in Jesus' name. Dumb, speak right now. Deb, hear right now. Lord, let the wonder of our weapon break down every infirmity in their life, every stronghold in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have cancer, those who have tuberculosis, and those who have ulcer, those who have any other internal disease, life-threatening disease, I pray at this very moment, all those germs will die away from your body. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are so weak and, and anemic and bedridden, I pray that strength will come to them right now. Healing will come to them right now. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Not those who are lame, those who are paralyzed, that one there, one leg shorter than the other, I command that short leg, grow out right now in Jesus' name. Those withered, lifeless limbs of the body, leg or hand, let power come right into that place. Stretch out that hand, stretch that leg, be healed and be made whole in Jesus' name. 
Lord, any skin disease over there, I pray everything be healed right now. Leprosy be healed in Jesus' name. Skin problem be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are barren, receive your miracle children. I pray for those who are jobless, receive your jobs right now in Jesus' name. Everywhere, Lord, now, everywhere, now, everywhere, now, everywhere, now, front, middle, back, left, and right, outside, inside, miracle. Miracle. Signs and wonders upon everyone here in Jesus' name. Put testimony in every mouth. Turn their lives around. Change everything that needs to be changed in Jesus' name. Complete transformation. Complete renewal. Complete healing and health. Perform it right now. We know you have done it. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, those who know I have got my miracles say, Amen.